I don't matter if that is all the time because I am one. Hey, National TV on a fat it let me on. I never look at Andy with a disability. I mean, we all have our own issues, we, everyone has something. The relationship between Lee and Andrew puzzles people. Come on, mate. They're not each other's type. <laughs> Good. I hate you. Andy doesn't speak clearly sometimes. And uh, Andy's walking up the hill at Kokoda and he's tripped over. And for the first time in five and a half years, I hear Andrew swear at me with a very clear voice. Lee, you idiot. <laughs> Good. The are what the cut is physical showing up my right. I don't believe that I made it. You made it, kid. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Andrew Thorpe. My disability is cerebral palsy. I get the manager, English, German, and Spanish, which is my native tongue. I got my disability when I was born. It was an arrested labour. Nothing was happening. I knew we were in deep trouble. The worst trauma I've experienced, watching for 20 minutes, waiting for the first breath to begin. He learned to read early, much earlier than a normal child. One of the greatest events of his life was when he was notified that he was accepted to transfer from Woden Special School into uh, Lynham High School. He celebrates the date every year, and that's a bit more important than his birthday. Andrew is currently studying a master's degree in disability studies. For a few years we'd felt that he, his motor function was uh, deteriorating. Okay, okay, okay. Stop. We were told to accept that that's what it would be. We went to one of the uh, early people who believed in the concept of neuroplasticity uh, and we were regarded as crazy then. Ten years ago as a scientist you would have got kicked off a stage for thinking brains were plastic. As an adult with um, a physical disability that's lifelong, like cerebral palsy. Lee Campbell, personal trainer, was in the army as a physical training instructor. <clears throat> Played a bit of football with uh, the Sydney Swans. You know, meeting Andy five and a half years ago, you know, he rocked into the gym and said, can you, you know, can you help me? My great impression of Lee is that he was a static hiding in a normal body. You know, he'll throw around jokes that only Andy can throw around that people will go, my God, you know, that just come out. Then you're going to push and use those legs. First meeting Andy, his physical capacity was, if you scale it out of 10, you know, probably two and a half, three. I wasn't in a hurry to get to know Lee. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted a vision that went beyond improving his strength. Getting ready for your next little adventure, Andy, which is Great China War, right? You've got to get those legs strong. Well, you'll train up to five days a week, six days a week, pre-event. Andy, stand up straight. You've got to look up. S some people think it's too fierce. He's very hard on me. How many times do I tell you? If it's just the emotional, mental block rather than a physical block, I won't accept it. Andy, ten more. Don't yeah, what you get right time. Sometimes you deal down about your disability and that's the way you don't fit it. You know, Andy thought it would be easy to take his own life and end it because of the difficulties that he may cause to his family and that around him. That's a tragic thing to think. If you have a disability, you need to do something about it or it will ruin you completely. Well, Leif finally convinced me to go with Andrew on one of his physical challenges.
Well, the next challenge is the Great China Wall. I realised that Lee wasn't just a pretty face. He had a vision for actually fixing some defective brain function. And he had heard of pioneers in neuroplasticity. But Lee doesn't talk as if he's got that sort of focus. He's very blokey, <laughs> but can apply an idea that an academic comes up with. For me, it's about getting Andy functional. This looks like boot camp to me. <laughs> By repeatedly doing the same task is you're getting what we call cortical excitability. So you're lighting up sections of the brain. It's like you take it from a gravel driveway to a smooth freeway. I want to get on my dog to be one of the most government people ever to be born in Australia because of mum. When I want one, the I want in me. When Andrew's uh, mum was diagnosed with cancer, this greatly uh, increased his obsessive anxiety. Andy's rocked in from uh, his weekend to training one morning. I said, Andy, how was your weekend? He said, yeah, good, good, yeah. Oh, probably not so good. I said, oh, why, what happened? He said, oh, well, mum died. And uh, that was it, he just straight onto the rail or onto it. I miss her dearly. You just think, wow, you know, how amazing is this guy? From about the middle of 2014, there's been steady improvement in his condition. You watch Andy pull a, a sled with 20 or 30 kilos of weights in it, he stands up, his posture's corrected. His finer motor skills now uh, are getting refined. He can hold things, he can cook, he can do his buttons up. Keep going, keep going. How good's that? His physical capacity now is, is a seven or an eight. His confidence, you know, <laughs> he's up there. He's 12 out of 10, that kid. <laughs> We originally thought you can only change as an infant, but now we know you can change lifelong. The nervous system is still plastic enough at Andrew's age to actually achieve movements that had been thought to be hardwired early on. Before, Dave just saw this as a clinical problem. All of a sudden, this, his son doesn't have a disability or dysfunction we've been able to mould them back together as a father-son relationship. Without that support around him, you know, uh, who knows what, where, where he may be. Well, you're doing it much easier than Kokoda, Andy, so something must be working. I am amazed at what I've been doing. Go. I'm trying to find my Oh, head up, that's why you look up. Let's go. Let's go. You need to control your disability or it will control you. It mine over matter if I can put it to you that way. Mine over my eyes.